Weezy out of here. Weezy out of here. All right, what's going on, everyone? Philly Insider Podcast here again. Today we have another prospect interview, Trey Norwood from Oklahoma, a 2021 NFL draft prospect, top 160 on the Draft Network's board. Congrats on that, man. Tied for a third in the country with five interceptions this year. Defensive player of the 2020 Cotton Bowl with that pick six this year. And we just want to thank you so much for this opportunity. So um, before we get started, how are you doing, man? I'm good, man. See, I appreciate y'all for for taking the time out and uh, I mean picking me to be on this. Uh, so, so so thank y'all. And as you mentioned, uh, wish your buddy Ian could be here. Um, shout out to him, especially with him being a huge OU fan, man. Uh, I, I love that. I love, I love having Sooner fans all across the world, man. So so that's love. Uh, so I appreciate y'all and happy to be here. Yeah, of course. Well, thank you, Ian, for watching. Appreciate you, man. Wish you could be here right now, but. Hey, Trey's just glad you're you're supporting the OU Sooners and hey, Boomer Sooner baby. So um, yes, let's just sir. let's just get into it, man. Tell us a little bit about yourself and just like your journey to the NFL draft up to this point, because everyone's got a different story. Um, for me, uh, just to to kind of in a nutshell, starting from from when I was little, sports is something that I've always loved. Uh, with me, I'm being I'm from Fort Smith, Arkansas. It's not much to do in Arkansas, um, but. Uh, my parents, they introduced me to sports at a young age, never forced it upon me, just introduced me to it. Um, they were both athletes as well. Um, and they, it's just something that, that I grew to love. And I, I played, that's that's all I know. Um, started playing football at age five, played all the way, uh, can continue to play the, uh, all the way through, um, never took a break. And uh, it's something that I just love, man. It, the, the excitement, the, the fun, the thrill of it, being able to compete. And make that bond with the team or with your brothers. Um, that's something that, that I grew to love and knew probably around. Um, well, I knew I wanted to go to go to college for ball. You know, because um, I, I was big into when I say being into basketball. I love basketball as well. Played that all the way through high school as well. Um, uh, one state, my senior actually of high school. Um, but I, I knew that I wanted to go to college for ball, and then um, it clicked for me when I around like uh, probably like ninth probably like ninth tenth ninth tenth grade um I knew I wasn't gonna wasn't gonna be you know six four six five guy so <laughs> knowing that I'd be five eleven six foot um I, I knew that I knew that football was my route which was was very fine with me like I said being that I, I grew to love the sport and, and the game so much um so it's kind of just kind of putting putting extra into it man and uh just each and every day training and grinding and working hard um, and, and got blessed with the opportunity to play at a, a prestige program at Oklahoma. Enjoyed all four years there. Um, loved it there. And now I'm, I'm blessed with this opportunity to, to be getting ready for the draft, um, have the opportunity to play at the next level. Hey, that's awesome, man. I, I will say it would have been pretty fun to see you play alongside a guy like Buddy Heald or a Trey Young at Oklahoma. That would have been, <laughs> that would have been pretty special. Right, right. <laughs> but, but hey, I mean, I, I'm glad you're playing football, too. I'm, I'm excited to see where you land this upcoming draft, man. Hey, we're hoping the Eagles shake you. Obviously, we're Philly fans on this pod. So, right, yeah. We're, we're not going not gonna to hide it. You got my dog, Jay Hurts. So. Yes. Yeah, well, we'll talk about Jalen a little bit today, too, because I want to get your thoughts on him. But first, you talk about Oklahoma, man. I mean – I want to ask you, what kind of led you to that program? Like, what made it enticing? And was there a moment where you just got on campus and you're just like, this is where I'm supposed to go? That, with, with what you just ended with, is what I'll start with. Just um, after taking my taking my official, I kind of, my parents, okay, you know how, how your parents know you so well, so that they can see it in me as well. It's just, right. I had that feeling like this, this is where, like you said, this is where I need to be. This, this is where I want to be. On top of that, I was recruited. Um, while Coach Stoops was still the coach, so mm -hmm. with him being a le the legendary coach that he is, being how winning, how 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 much they win, how how winning of a program OU is, I, I knew that I want to be a part of that as well. Being that I, I hate losing, and how how, how much I, I'm just I'd love to compete. My competitive edge, my competitive nature, 
Um, just my competitiveness as a whole. So on top of that, and then like I said, just me having that feeling like this, this is where I, I want to be, knowing that I have the opportunity to compete for a, a, a championship every postseason. Um, right. That the, all those things is tied into my decision. It's something that I'm glad I made that decision. Uh, so I, I loved every moment that I had at Oklahoma um, down there in Norman. Yeah, for sure. I mean, talk about Coach Stoops. Now you guys have Coach Riley, obviously. Um, Coach right. Riley, very well known coach among the college football world. Give us a little bit of an inside scoop. What's he like in the locker room? Like, what kind of locker room presence does he or culture right. does he create? What's his football? Obviously, we know he's like a genius and on the offense mm-hmm. side of it. What's his kind of football IQ like? Just give us a little inside scoop on Lincoln Riley. Just to start it off, just Coach Riley as a as a whole, man, he's he's a coach that I feel like every player would love to play for because he's a player's coach. And I feel like those are those those are, are some of the the best coaches. Um, he, he loves to do, I mean, he loves to hear our side of things. I mean, our, our input, he loves to do what's best for the team. And um, just, I mean, his resume speaks for itself when it comes to coaching. As you mentioned, he's just an, an, a, a genius when it comes to the offensive side of the ball. But, but with me being on the defensive side of the ball, he's just seeing that and then just kind of how he, he's just a, he's a natural leader. Um, you know how some people they just have that you can see them. He's just a natural leader, and I I love because I, I was two weeks on campus. I want to say when he was introduced as a head coach. Um, so I was my class. We were fresh on campus um, when he he got introduced as a head coach, and I loved every moment of playing with him. He's one of those type of coaches you could go up there um, during the day if you wanted to. Uh, his door was always open, open door. Yeah. Um, Go in there, sit down. Just, not even, not even if you have anything particular to talk about. If you wanted to stop by, say what's up, coach. Yeah. Um, it was always open to do that. So for me, I just feel like those little things like that just just make you love a coach even more. For outside of all the great things that he's he's done for us, um, when it comes to the football aspect of things. Yeah, I feel like with just everything that was going on, like the, this whole past year, obviously, has just been crazy in the world. And um, obviously in the fall, just you guys playing football with COVID and all this, like you kind of need a leader like that in the locker room who you can look up to and just have that open door just if you need to go talk to them. So right. but I'm glad to hear that about Lincoln. And um, I want to shift gears a little bit to your play style. I believe you're six foot 190. I'm not sure what your most recent measurements are, but um, I know you're, you know you're a ball hawk man. Um, I believe you can play in the slot as well if needed. I mean, we've seen you play pretty well in man coverage, which that's not an easy task in the Big 12. Let's be honest. Like, <laughs> Big 12 is not an easy easy conference to play with. I, I mean, obviously, we know we have Jalen Rager on the Eagles, too. Um, who I'm yeah, sure that's, my, that's, that's my dog, too. Yeah, I'm sure you went up against him as well. So um, just tell us a little bit about your play style in your own words. I mean, obviously, we've talked to a lot yeah. of prospects, and we ask, like, well, who would you compare your game to? And pretty much the same answer we got every time when we asked that question was, well, everyone's game is different. So, and obviously, you know, at that point, at this point, we've kind of learned that's so true. Everyone right, has a completely right. different game play style. So, what's what's your game like? Um, for me, I think the biggest thing for me that um, I kind of, you know, everybody has that one thing that, that makes them unique. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is my my versatility. And when I say mm-hmm. that, um, it, it's you, you can on film you can see me at outside corner of my freshman. And sophomore year, into my sophomore year, I'm in strong safety. Um, this year, I, I did some, f- some free safety mm. um, in our in our dime package. Um, but my, my main position this year was, um, was excuse my dog was was nickel <laughs> uh, was, was, was nickel and, and strong safety. So just me being able to play all all five positions on the back end um, and play them at a high play them at a high level as well. Right. Um, I think that's the biggest thing for me. So that on top of my IQ for the game, I feel like um, I feel like those two those two main things is what helps me thrive. Um, and then just that um, kind of kind of how you mentioned just that that playmaking ability, that that playmaking mindset. Um, I'm, I'm always every time I run up on the field. Uh, All good. Take your time, man. <laughs> Every time I um, every time I, I'm lining up on the field, man, I, I'm looking I'm looking to make a play um, each and every snap, um, and and I think that the those big plays, making those interceptions and things, comes from my IQ, my, my knowing of the of the game, right. watching film, studying the other team, and just knowing our defense is um, like a book. Um, so I feel like all those type things they they, they kind of tie into one. 
which leads which leads me to being able to to be that playmaker, making a play uh, when the ball is in the air. So those it, it sums it up just that that versatility playmaker that, that no matter where I line up at, um, that I'm trying to seize each and every opportunity to make make a play when it comes my way. Right. I mean, obviously transitioning to the NFL, it's hard to project where all you guys are going to end up playing and where you all you guys are going to end up like what playing what high, what levels guys are going to play at and just being able to move around is a great way to just be able to stick around find a spot you're comfortable at and eventually you know before you know it you're just you're a starting starting player there for a while so it's always it's right. good to be able to move around for sure um i mean you talk about big plays and just playmaking ability too uh, the film is your cheat sheet like i think we, we ask a lot of prospects just about their film study and all that like it if you're not watching film i, <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, you, you, so. you just said it it's the cheat sheet. Um, yeah. The film doesn't lie. Pretty much, what you see on film is what you're going to get from from, yeah. from that opponent that you're playing that week. Yeah, exactly. So I want to go along with that. We we talked about Jalen Rager, but obviously we've had some some other guys come out of the Big Twelve: Denzel Mims, James Washington, Alan Lazard, um, and I believe I believe in 2018 you guys faced Alabama, and you got you had like Judy, Waddle, Ruggs, and Smith all on the same team. All on the same Just, team, right? Insane, right. insane to think about when you go back and look at some of those Alabama rosters. Even some of the running back cores are just absolutely right. crazy. Josh yeah. Jacobs and Najee that year yeah. too, <laughs> <laughs> and they had um, Irv Smith at tight end. Yeah, think, uh, you know they were loaded. I mean, of course, too, they were loaded for sure. Yeah, no, hundred percent. So, what's it like? Just all those guys I mentioned. I mean, outside of Alabama too. How were you able to, to like just sustain success in your conference, man, and just be able to be one of the top corners? That's not an easy task. Um, for me, it's just it's just buying into myself. I, I'm a type of guy that um, I like to stay in my own lane. Don't not worry not not worry about the next man. Um, of course, watch film on an opponent and study them, but not get too caught up in oh, what am I going to do versus this man? Um, but just buying in my technique and trusting in my ability. That's that's a big thing for me. Watching the film, studying the film. Um, having that confidence going into the game, being prepared, and then just going out there and trusting my technique, in, in which I work on each and every day in practice, uh, which I work on on my own. I feel like that that's that's I think that's the that's just the mindset that I've always had. Um, mm. just, just focus on me to to get one percent better each and every day. Um, like I said, and once I get out there on the field, it, it's I'm trusting in my technique. I don't. I, it doesn't matter who's lined up on the opposite side of me. I'm gonna trust my technique, and I'm always confident in myself that. Um, that I want to get the job done. Yeah, I mean, hey, that's the mindset you got to have as a corner. Every every coach wants a corner. Like, they don't want any shy corners in today's league. Can't be like right. that. So, um, I mean, and you guys had wide receiver talent yourself at Oklahoma. I mean, Marquise Brown and CeeDee Lamb are the two big names. Ian is a diehard CeeDee Lamb fan. He was livid right. when the Eagles did not get him in the draft. So, um, I mean, we, yeah. we, we know about CeeDee Lamb a lot on the pod. And, just what was it like going up against those guys in practice, and how cool would it be if you got to face off against one of them on a Sunday? The main, I feel like that that's another thing that 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 helps out a lot when, when yeah. you're on a team like OU. Like I said, you go up, you go up against um, not only the league guys every day, but but those first round guys, um, as you mentioned, um, CD and, and and Jet, what we call them, Marquise. Um, yeah. <laughs> so just lined up against those guys every day because in, in practice I'm going against them. Each and every period, um, whenever we're going against offense, from one on ones to seven on one to team, no matter what we're doing, I'm going up against those guys, and it's it's always a, a healthy healthy competition. Um, but we're out we were out there each and every each and every day, each and every rep to to make each other better. So when we came together um, as, as one unit on, on Saturdays, that that it would all just flow, and that that, that makes the game easier as well. We we're going up against those those top guys, and not only going up against the top guys, but they're they're working just as hard, just as hard as each and everybody out there on the field, if not harder. So just being able to compete and grind with those guys each and every day right. that, that um, helps out a lot when it comes to the, the, those games on Saturdays. Yeah, for sure. I think that's definitely something that that people forget is like some of the, some of these guys you're going up against in practice too helps right. you prepare a lot as well. Um, and I want to ask you too, like, are there any NFL corners who you really admire that it'd be cool to learn from at the next level or who you just try to take from their game at all? Um, with me, just how, how much I, I, I love the game, how much I study um, study the game, especially studying the DB position, being that, that that's what I am. I take, I like to take from a lot of guys. Uh, my my all-time, of course, Dion. you know, everybody's yeah. 
Yeah, right. right. My all-time favorite for me is Patrick Peterson. Um, mm. uh, that's that's just that's been my all-time favorite for a long time. I like I love watching him. Um, some of the younger guys coming in, um, Jay Jay Alexander. Yeah. I was committed. I was committed to Louisville at mm. one point. Um, so just kind of fell in love with his game, how how, how he plays. Um, Darius Slay is another one that, that I love. To watch. Um. Uh, let me think. I can go on for days. And then, yeah. uh, Earl Thomas, um, Buddha Baker. I, I just like to take take parts from each and every one of those because they're all they're all great corners. Right. Neil, Jalen Ramsey, just how freak, how much of a freak of nature he is. Um, like I said, I, my list can go on for days. I can see right. talk about days, but those are just kind of some of the guys that that I love to to watch and learn from, um, and just try to take parts um, from, from them. So if I was I mean, blessed with opportunity to, to be drafted to, to one of their teams, um, you know what I mean, be able to to learn from them. Those guys are vets and uh, all pros, pro bowlers, doing it at a high level, um, future Hall of Famers. So that's something that, that, that I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I mean, speaking of future Hall of Famers, we're hoping that like guys like you, Trey Brown, right. I believe, is going in as well. Parnell Motley, I think, is already in the league. Um, a bunch of Oklahoma good, DBs yeah. already already up there. So it's cool to see that you guys are really starting to make a name for yourself after, like, Oklahoma defense, I believe, was kind of off the map. for. I mean, Big 12 defense overall, people aren't usually right. looking at it, to be honest. But it's cool to see you guys putting yourself on the map because, I mean, Oklahoma next year is even um, – you guys had a really good year this year. Next year, really gearing up for another national championship run. Right. Um, hopefully, right. And going off of that, I mean, I want to ask you about Spencer Rattler, too. Obviously, he's a big right. name in Oklahoma, like – What's he like? What's his leadership style? Just how excited are you just to see him next year, just kind of prove himself? And he'll probably be in the draft after next year if we had the guess. But, like, right. what, what, just get, tell us a little bit about what he's like because Ian's also a big, like I said, a big Rattler fan too. Right. Um, from day one when, when, he, when he stepped on campus, um, honestly, from the first seven on seven, I was like, yeah, I was like, this I was like, this, this guy's going to be – he's going to be he's gonna be legit. He's going to be one of the mm-hmm. ones. And I, for him to 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 step into that role after, you know what I mean, he he's he's gonna be the next one. You know, Coach Roddy has a yeah, he, he's a QB a QB genius. So so him to step into that role at a young age too, because you look, um, Bake was 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 older, K one was yeah. older, J, you know, all, all those guys were were older toward, towards the end of the end of their college careers. Um, but for him to step into that role as a freshman, I, I think he did a tremendous job. And it's only it's only going like this. Um it, it, for this upcoming year, and I, I just know he's he's going to blaze it up. Um, I, I'm excited for him and, and the rest of the team because, uh, like I said, for him to come in at that young age, uh, you know, what I mean, uh, not not have any college experience, um, honestly, in, in his first year starting, being able to lead that offense, um, and you know, what I mean, ultimately uh, help us help us win the another another Big Twelve in, in, a, in a Cotton Bowl. So. I'm I'm super excited for him. Like I said, that's one of those type of things. I could I could see it when he first got on campus. So I, I just know um, you know, I mean, he, he's gonna do tremendous this year. Like I said, I, I hope they win Natty this year, you know what I mean? Uh, this is his Heisman year too as well. So I hope I hope all that goes in his favor. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm my guys, so I'm rooting for him um, through and through. Yeah. I mean, and you talked about it, stepping into that role now with just being an Oklahoma quarterback. The, the pressure that is on you now just because of the guys before you is just crazy. And you have to be – I mean, quarterbacks have to be a special type of way to be able to block all that out. And it seems like Spencer's right. kind of got that. He's got that swagger to him. I mean, I remember yeah, the, Red, the Red River rivalry in overtime, that, that ball he threw, I believe, to, to Stoops. I mean, it was just on a dime. Um, just the, some of the throws he can make, it's just like – you can talk about the X's and O's and, and, you know, the mechanics you had in the play, the concept that was drawn up. But at the end of the day, it's also just like some people just have that clutch gene. Seems like Spencer's got it, too. So right, right. Uh, definitely cool to see. And also, I mean, you touched on Jalen Hurts as well a little bit earlier. He's your dog. And um, obviously, we're Eagles fans. So what do you kind of think of Jalen this year? I mean, he's he's expected to be QB1. Um, we're really excited. I mean, I, I love Jalen. I think just the confidence and swagger he brings to that locker room. And just the, I think just think the young guys just look up to him, just hearing about, you know, he's working with the young guys saying, look, this is what you got to do on this route. Like, let's make this whole adjustment, just working out with them right now. And all the things he's doing with them, is just great to hear. It's, he's just such a professional coming into the league as a rookie. That's, that's, like, that's what I was about to hear. Yeah. Right. So what do you um, think of Jalen? Um, 
unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't get to physically, you know, I didn't get to physically play with him that, that year he mm. was there. But right. just being with him for that year, that's probably the the biggest thing that I that I, I learned from him. Um, Cause I, I always prided myself on which my parents taught me at a young age. I'm a very self disciplined person. Um, you know, what I mean, carry, and that's kind of like once I got to college, that's how I like to carry myself. Um, I, I knew I was I always wanted to be a pro and be in, in this process, so I always prided myself on carrying myself like a pro. But um, just how how he did it and how he he literally he literally was a pro his his last year at OU, and I was just like, man, this guy like he just has it between the ears. Um, he he's just very heady and, and he's a level headed guy. That's what I love. That's kind of that's another way I pride myself to to never get too high and never get too low. And that that's exactly exactly how he was, man. And I just that's just, that's just the guy. Like I said I wasn't even, I wasn't with him, but but a year and I just learned so much from him. Um, just talking to him, I mean, listening to him, um, just us having casual conversations, and just seeing the way he carried himself and his demeanor about everything. Everything was was about business and and it's paying off uh, like I said he had a once he stepped in there this year um for, for y'all for the Eagles he did a great job so I'm definitely rooting for him you know what I mean um uh with, with him with the Eagles him getting ready to be QB1 so like I said if I if I'm if I'm paired up again with them teamed up with them, uh, with them again I love it or if I'm opposite of them you know what I mean try to try to terrorize them a little bit um <laughs> uh, if I play against them but that's just the guy that he he's 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 way he's way above his years. Um, mm -hmm. if that makes like way above his his age. He's twenty how he early twenties, but carries himself like he he's walked through this life already. <laughs> yeah, I mean that level headedness too. I like that you mentioned that because Philly is a city where you you have to be level headed. If you get too high or too low. It's not going to end well. I mean, I'll say that just from being a fan here forever. Um, and he, he just seems like a guy, like, he's not going to worry about what anyone's saying about him either. He does, like, right. right. He just, he's just going to keep it on the field. Like you said, all business, which is what I love about him too. So um, talking more about your teammates, I mean, you guys are all getting to enter the draft process together, which is pretty cool just to have some guys alongside you who you know. Right. I mean, obviously, we talk about Trey Brown. I am a massive Ramondre Stevenson fan. That's one of my favorite yeah. players in the draft this year. Creed Humphrey, who's just an absolute monster on the line. And right. I believe you're I believe you're close with Ifatu Malfanwu too. Um, I don't know if you've heard, if you know. Yeah, that's uh, we, uh, we we got real close. We trained together out in okay. uh, out in Tampa. That's that's my dog, man. I talk yeah. to him about every day. Yeah, Ifatu's Ifatu's a great guy. We had him on here not long ago, and I love talking to him. He's he's also just a dog. I mean. Having a guy who can who's six three two thirteen at mm, corner move it, it, it everyone's in, everyone's in their family. I don't know if y'all remember his brother. Yeah, um, Obi. Obi, yeah, Obi. Um, but, uh, if he does, that's my dog though for sure. That's my dog. Yeah, and I'm just have, going. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to tell him uh, when we get off here. I'm gonna have to tell him um, that, that I was on here. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Let him know. Um, but I mean, talking about just those guys that, that I just mentioned, how cool is it just to be entering the draft process with them? Just to have some guys by your side who are going through the, like, you know, all the same right. things with obviously COVID is a big part of the draft process here and things are looking very different with the combine and everything. How nice is that to just have those guys by your side? Uh, it, it means a lot, especially starting with my teammates, especially um, the guys that, that I came in with. Um, right. You know, I mean, could be, me, TB, Creed, and Adrian, we're all the same class. We, we all came in together. And then me and TB, we're we're super close um, off the field. That's one of my one, one, one of my super close friends. So just being able to go through this process with them, man, it, it just means a lot for us to be able to share the experience because experience, we'll look back one day and be like, man, y'all remember uh, when we were all back in Norman for the pro day or y'all remember this, this, and that or – Y'all remember the times at the Senior Bowl. Um, so just just being able to to have those moments with them, man, um, it, it it means a lot. It 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 helps out with the, you know, I mean the 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 stress. It, it helps out. It it, it eases it and makes it makes it um, makes it a lot more fun as it already is a fun process and a blessing because a lot of people don't get to do this, but it makes it more fun. And then on top of that, meeting those guys like Iffy um, at when you go go off training, that that becomes a bond and becomes a family as well. Um, all the guys that that I trained with out there in, in Tampa prior to the to the pro day, um, we're 
we're all still we're in, we're in group messages. Um, we talk just about every day. Like I said, me and Ify, that's me and him are probably the closest out of that group um, mm-hmm. when it comes to hard. So I talk to him just about every day. Um, so just being able to to meet those meet those guys and, and grow that bond that that brotherhood. Um, like I say it, it's very it's very fun and interesting because you're seeing another guy go through the same process uh, that, that you're going through, chasing their dreams. Like, just being able to do that together, I feel like it's just fun. And it means a lot, man. So I'm loving it. Yeah, 100%, man. And it was cool to hear you talk about Trey Brown, too. I mean, I believe you guys learned under Roy Manning, who was the Oklahoma cornerbacks coach, obviously a guy who has the NFL experience, too. That must be cool to learn from him. And, I mean, look, Trey, obviously, you know, the Red River rivalry interception was – that was one of my favorite plays. That right. game just – that game was insane. Um, no, it was it was it was a game for sure. Yeah, <laughs> and then obviously you had that pick six in the Cotton Bowl, um, just like some very clutch plays, and obviously just the little things too, like you know maybe batting down a pass on second down, stuff like that. that you guys just were able to do during time in Oklahoma. How big was Roy in that? And just talk about you know your teammate Trey and just how much you guys grew together under Roy. Um, Coach Manny was he, he was he was great. Um, like you say with, with him having that experience, just having that NFL mindset, um, bringing in teaching to us. And I was I was fortunate enough and very blessed to, to be in both meeting rooms with him and Coach Grinch. Um, like I said, Coach Manning is a corners coach, and then Coach Grinch is the safeties and nickels coach. So just being able to learn from those guys. And it's a plus when, when your position coach is the D.C. as well. Um, so yeah. just being able to learn from him and just the mindset that Coach Grinch has and Coach Manning is how they, they mm-hmm. attack you. You, you 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 would think they're they're still players the, um, the way they attack each and every day each and every meeting each and every practice and I feel like that just trickles down and 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 just it's like it's like a it's like a monopoly effect um, it trickles down and it's contagious uh, it's contagious in a good way each and every player um, buys in especially uh, on, on that back end been able to learn from those guys um, it's the coach Manny and coach Grinch from a technical standpoint just a mindset standpoint um, of each and every out there, each and every rep that we're here to dominate. Um, and we're here for one reason, that's to, that's to win and to make plays. Yeah, it's cool to hear you talk about Coach Grinch, too, just the defense he's been able to put together there in recent years. I mean, even just, you know, guys like, I believe, Brendan Radley, High, Hiles, uh, is playing that nickel spot a little mm-hmm. bit now, too. Um, just guys like that are some of the guys that stand out to me, too. And just, you know, definitely Coach Grinch, I'm glad you mentioned him because he's a big part of what you guys are building yeah. there. Uh, with the Sooners. So a um, couple more questions for you, man. I want to ask you just about special teams. I believe you play on special teams. I'm a big special teams fan. It's a huge part of the game to me if you can yeah. that third phase of the game. So I want to I hear you talk about that. And also just overall, we've talked a lot about your play style, um, where you've been in Oklahoma, just your experiences there and everything and, and the draft process. What are teams getting in you in the locker room and just if, what would you say to scouts who ask, what are we getting in Trey Norwood if we bring him on to our roster? Right. Um, to, to start with special teams, that's something that um, our special teams coach, he, he emphasized from, from day one when I was a freshman. And I just, um, I, feel, I feel like I bought into it. Um, I played all four special teams my freshman year. Wow. Um, and then junior year, did three. Uh, only, the only one I didn't do was kickoff return. I mean, sophomore year, only one I didn't do was kickoff return. And then this year, was the same way. So I, I pride myself on being on, on the special team because it, it's the first play of offense or the first play of defense. Um, yeah. So um, it's a it's a complimentary game. Football is a complimentary game. You have to be clicking on all three phases, um, uh, you know, of the ball to win. Um, and that and when I say that, that means offense, defense, and special teams. Special teams is um, just as important, or sometimes even more important. So I, I, I pride myself on special teams, and I mean, if that has to um, has to be a role that I, that, um, that I take, I'm eager and willing to do that with every team. Uh, you know, what I mean, I end up going to. So I feel like kind of how you say it, it's a key part to the game, and I, I take it just as serious as I as I take my role on the defense. So that's the same way I'm going to attack it um, at the next level. And then just to touch on your second question, um, Trey Norwood just we kind of touched on him as a player, but as a as a man, as a person, I'm a I'm first. I'm a hardworking guy. Um, that, that's what my parents always they taught um, taught me growing up to to be hardworking. That nothing is ever given; everything is earned. So that's how I attack each and everything, um, all aspects, um, whether it's sports or anything in life in general. And um, so you're getting a hardworking guy. 
um, d dedicated, respectful, honest guy, and, and a guy that's willing to do um, whatever for the team to, to reach our ultimate goal, which which will be winning a Super Bowl. Um, so on top of that, inside the locker room, you're, you're getting a great um, laid back. I'm a chill guy. I'm, I'm real laid back. Um, uh, so just a guy that's, that's hardworking, all ears, willing to to do, do whatever I need to do, like I said, to, to help my team win. Uh, I'm looking to learn something each and every day because um, we never stop learning. Um, once you once you yes. get close, once you once you get close minded as a person and uh, stop learning, that's when that's when you you you've, you've you know, I mean you've hit a stagnant point, and that's a big thing that I never want to get complacent. Um, like I said, never get too high, never get too low. So that's that's just. All in all, that's, that's, that's what you're getting out of Trey Norwood as a person, as well as the, the tangibles and and the things that I bring to, uh, on the field. Hey, man, NFL needs more guys like you. I mean, just I'm talking about the last part, which is continually learning. I mean, I've, I've been very interested in just the last year, just the in-depth of the film. I've always been a fan, but just learning how to watch film and, and you know, learning what right. techniques and all that. And I've been picking up a lot. And I, remember I got to a point where I got a little closed minded and I had to kind of humble myself and get back to like, all right, football is there's like, there's like an ocean of things I don't know. I got to like, I got to get back to work and just realize like, you can always be learning something. Even coaches too, like right, you have your right, philosophy right. too, but you're always continually evaluating that each week. I mean, you look at just talking about when Jalen came in last year for the Eagles, like, they built a game plan around him that we had never seen some of the plays they implemented. And they brought over stuff from Oklahoma too. It's like, you got to always be continually right. evaluating your team, your personnel and your philosophy and continually learning more about the, the game of football overall too. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, and you talk about the locker room too. I mean, it's such a big part and um, special teams. So, I mean, one of my favorite players last year was Rudy Ford who played for the Eagles he, he doesn't play on defense. He's just a gunner. He just goes down there. He makes tackles, though, and he got paid this offseason with the Jaguars just because he's an amazing gunner. So um, it's definitely right. an important part of the game. It can make an impact. He changed field position for us a ton last year um, and the year before that. So just want to touch on those two things, man. That was all I had for you. I think you gave a lot of great answers, man. We loved having you, you on the podcast, and it was great just to hear about your story and your career thus far. So anything you want to say before we sign off, man? Uh, I appreciate y'all for having me, man. Like yeah. I said, thank you. Uh, I said, y'all, y'all be safe and God bless. Of course, hey, we're hoping maybe you and Effie can join the Eagles this year. So that'll be, I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that'll be nice. That'll be yeah, nice. of course. Well, thank you again, Trey. We appreciate it. Everyone, we're going to sign off here. Uh, run, booby, run. Fly, go, fly. See you guys later.